the only solution I can see, the, the only weapon I can see is Reform UK. Stalinist sort of state, isn't he, where people are afraid to actually speak out. He thought with Southport, I know what I'll do. I'll just demonise the white working classes and that'll be fine because they never fight back anyway. But this Labour government is a godsend to the SNP. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Nick Talks. This episode's returning guest is the Preston journalist. So welcome, Ash, to the show. Hi, Nick. Great to be back. How was your channel growing since you got hacked and lost everything? Uh, it's going all right now. We're getting towards the 18,000 mark. So slowly but surely getting back. Excellent. So if you don't already follow Ash on YouTube, go into the description of this video, click the link, take you to his channel, Make sure you subscribe and you won't be disappointed. He lost everything because a hacker got in and, and just ruined everything. He had to set up a new account. Um, let's jump straight into this. So who are we going to talk about? Let's have a guess. Let let me say the word Starmer. What does that mean to you at the moment? I don't know. What does it mean to me? It means disaster. It means to me a man that is purposely, in my opinion, spending all of his time out of the country. I mean, I've never known a prime minister go away 15 times in just a couple of months of taking office. Yet he goes away and seems to talk about this country. Then when he's over here, he talks about being abroad. We shouldn't be too surprised, of course. This is a guy that openly said in an interview with, who was it now? Was it Laura Coonsberg or Emily Maitlis, one of those, that he prefers Davos to Westminster anyway. So it shouldn't surprise us that this guy is spending all of his time out of the country. I mean, I have his popularity ratings, the latest one I've seen, minus 38 now, going down every single week. That is a drop of, I think it's over 49 percentage points since it, since the election. I've never known a collapse like it. No, absolutely. And part of the reason that's happened is because he wasn't elected to be prime minister. He won that election by default because nobody wanted the Tories. So no one, no one voted for him. They just voted to get rid of the shambles of the last 14 years of Tory mismanagement. Now, Starmer may be out of the country at the moment for many, many, many reasons. But one of the reasons is he doesn't want to talk about the rumours online about the Southport tragedy and what he knew, when he knew, um, his involvement potentially with the family, um, Liverpool police are getting a slating at the moment. I'm hearing rumours now online that the chief constable will not keep her job when all this comes out in court. So it's got nothing to do with a court case, which I don't necessarily want to talk about. This is to do with the surrounding issues, which is if things turn out to be true and it comes out in court over the next few weeks and months, um, that some of the political prisoners we have in the country at the moment were sent to jail for what they said. If it comes out in court that what they said was true, what happens there? Because that will be a miscarriage of justice. What happens when it comes out that, if this is true, that 10 Downing Street and Starmer knew a lot of information in the first couple of days um, that this accuser has now been charged with, but kept it away from the public. What happens when all this comes out? I mean, the ramifications are deadly serious, aren't they, for Storm? I mean, that, that's why the case has now been deferred again, hasn't it? It's been put back again. I'm not sure what the new date is, but it was meant to be January the 20th, was it? And it's now been put back again. I Nigel Farage said it out loud. He said that he understood there was serious, um, should we say, lobbying going on by the government to get this case put back. Now, of course, we can't talk about the case. We've got to get ourselves in trouble, etc. But the rumours about... Now, the rumours about the dad and the what Starmer's involvement was and stuff, I'm hearing that's not true. Um, I, as, as far as like legal involvement goes with his dad and stuff, I'm hearing that's not true. I don't, I don't think there's any truth to that. Or if that's my understanding at the moment anyway. But... There's a sad irony to this, that they don't want people to talk about it, that they are taking away parliamentary privilege, which is 
unheard of. I mean, unprecedented to take away the right of an MP, whether it be Richard Tice or Farage or anybody from the Tories or any party to ask questions about this. Yet Starmer himself, Yvette Cooper, people like that, actually prejudiced the case against these people that they call far-right hooligans by saying they're going to be rushed through the courts, they're going to be slammed in jail straight away without even knowing if they were guilty or not before they'd had any sort of fair trial. So there's the, that's that's irony for you. They wanted those people slammed away, and you're right. When the truth comes out about this, if the if any of these rumors are true, those people are, as as you rightly said, political prisoners, and they've been locked up for saying something that was allegedly potentially true in the first place, and that obviously they should be released straight away. Now. Starmer will throw anybody under the bus to make sure that he keeps his own job. That's absolutely clear, by the way. He's now distancing himself from his chancellor and stuff. So Yvette Cooper would have to go, certainly. I mean, she's useless anyway. She she might as well not be part of the government. You never see or hear from her on anything. Starmer would hang on, probably, I suspect, for a few months. But what me and you said a while ago was absolutely right. This guy is not going to last years as prime minister. He might, he might last till the May elections. But there's, so, uh, there's such a scandal-ridden government. And you're right, it was a vote to get the Tories out. People were sick of the Conservatives. Rishi Sunak could have walked on water in front of people and they still wouldn't have paid any attention. And that's how bad it had got for the Conservatives. They drifted into being a centre-left party. They weren't, they weren't Conservative anymore. And people just thought, well, I've had enough of you. I want you out. But still, there was no enthusiasm, was there, for Labour, for Starmer, for any of them. Yvette Cooper nearly lost her seat. Wes Streeting nearly lost her seat. Starmer lost 50% of his majority. That's how much enthusiasm there was for these people. Yet all they've done is do their absolute best to piss people off with these terrible policies and cover-ups. And it's, well, as you can see by the polls, it's taken its toll severely on this alleged government. That's why I keep calling them alleged. Yeah. You just said a word then, a phrase then, which I was going to get to, which is cover up. Now, we, we need to remember that politicians who do the wrong thing hardly, I'd say, never lose their position over doing the wrong thing. They lose their position for covering up that they did the wrong thing. That's what brought down Boris Johnson was, was, was the cover up. That's what brought down Nixon, President Nixon. It wasn't the, and we called it the Watergate scandal. It wasn't the fact that his, whoever they were, were acting illegally and breaking into hotels looking for evidence. That didn't bring him down. What brought him down was the cover up of trying to hide what went on. And I think that's what's going to bring down Keir Starmer. The first rumour is he, you know, he, he was the barrister, the solicitor, um, for the accused father to make sure he stayed in the country with asylum. Now, if that turns out to be true, it's not a nice look, but do you know what? He was a barrister. His job is to represent people, not to like those people, and but to do the best he can for his uh, basic customer. There's many solicitors and barristers who represent the most horrendous people in society and do their best job. That's part of our criminal justice system. So I'm sure he'd get a hard time for that. I'm sure it would be more fuel on the fire to get rid of him. But I don't think it would have brought him down. I wouldn't want it to bring him. I wouldn't want it to bring him down either for doing his job. But what happens then if we find out it's part of that's true, let's say, you know, he wasn't directly involved, but he was part involved. The his junior solicitor was look, let's say there's a connection. What will bring him down is the cover up of him trying to make to, to make it look like he wasn't involved and him hiding the facts. That will bring him down is always the cover up. It's it seems to be every politician's default position, doesn't it? Let's cover it up, let's pretend it's not happening. Let's just tell people this is happening when actually you can see right in front of your eyes what's going on. As I just said, the, the rumours about Starmer's being that guy's barrister, the father's barrister, from what I'm hearing, isn't true. Now, whether there's any connection whatsoever, that's a different matter. I don't know. There, there might be some connection. But people are so afraid to talk about it that these questions simply aren't being put to Starmer because he's creating this Stalinist sort of state, isn't he, where 
people are afraid to actually speak out. He thought with Southport, I know what I'll do. I'll just demonise the white working classes and that'll be fine because they never fight back anyway. And lo and behold, people have started. I mean, all right, I don't condone the violence of setting fire to hotels, etc. But people's anger is reaching boiling point. And now people are coming out on the streets, whether it be peaceful or not. Hopefully it is peaceful and it is most of the time. Look at the farmers protest, for example, perfectly peaceful. But people are coming out now in numbers. And there wasn't just farmers at that protest. There was people from all representing all sorts of causes, people simply wanting Starmer out. And the numbers were been greatly diminished by the mainstream media, but there was tens of thousands there, not, not the 10,000. Sky News said it was a few hundred. People's anger is at boiling point. And Starmer, because he's got zero leadership skills, zero personality, and basically no charisma whatsoever, cannot and is incapable of leading people to make make them think that he's doing the right thing for them or even having the very basics of trust in him. There's no trust in Starmer whatsoever. People don't believe him. And they don't believe this government. Now, that probably spans back right down you can probably go right back to blur looking at things like that ever since you know the social democrats took charge which was blur onwards and we're still living with we're still living with that now these people just cover everything up they never tell us the truth and there's no greater example of that than manifesto after manifesto i don't care if it's labor or tory the manifestos are complete lies their policies are complete lies and every time something big happens it's a complete lie the, the official line sorry is a complete lie and people now have seen through that and that's probably part of the reason hardly anybody came out to vote in the general election because they just think they're all a bunch of lying tosses anyway i'm not i'm, I'm not gonna vote for any of them and star is probably reaping the whirlwind of that not because his cover-ups are any worse than what you know blur taking us to an illegal war or something like that but because he's now people have people are at the end of the tethers put it that way and they've, they've had enough but yeah, but we've, we've seen that recently across the Atlantic in America where Trump not only won, but won everything. Um, and won places they've never won before, won the popular vote, won the Senate, looks like he's winning the House. And, and no one can believe that happened. It's because the people have had enough. And they may not have voted for Trump because of Trump. They voted Trump because we need a disruptor. We can't keep on with what we've got. So that protest vote is out there and we'll, we'll discover that in May at the local elections and at the next general election. Now, you just mentioned the farmers. What I think is special about the farmers, the, part, the farmers are not a political movement per se. So people may want change in this country, but don't like reform and, and don't like Nigel Farage. I don't like reform came out of the Brexit party and, and they may be staunch Europeans. They may not want to get behind the Tories because Tories have killed us for 14 years and they're the creators of the mess we're in now. So we need someone else. We need something else to get behind. And I think it can be the farmers. I think everybody, to a certain extent, has an affinity with farmers uh, because they seem... They don't seem dangerous. They produce our food. They have animals. They, you know, they look after the land. There seems to be something about farmers that we like. And this persecution of the farmers, as well as persecution of, of many other sections of society, could be the glue that brings everyone together under that no farmers, no food protest. Again, it's being led by um, Jeremy Clarkson. Love him or hate him. He, he he does the PR side of it. He can get the press attention and he's got lots of followers. So I, I think that farmers protest, if it carries on, which I hope it does, could be the anvil we need to break this government. Well, it's certainly not impossible, is it? Look at Holland. The farmers party over there is now one of the biggest parties in the country and everybody was laughing at them a couple of years ago and they started protesting. There's, Obviously, there's farmers' protests all over the Europe, isn't there, about the silly agreements to sign in to import more food, etc. And that's essentially what our government's trying to do. Get rid of our farmland and import... We said this before, I think, on this podcast. Import food from New Zealand or from wherever. You know, it's going to save the planet because there's no emissions coming out of England. No, it's all right. It's costing more emissions to ship it over here anyway, morons. But 
it's possible. And I think actually there was one encouraging sign at that that farmers protest, and that was it seemed to unite the right a bit. And that's what this country needs. Labour are now toast at the next election, but that doesn't mean they can't win it. And the way they could win it is by people splitting their votes. Some people are going to vote UKIP, some are going to vote reform, some are going to vote uh, Tory. And, you know, some might vote Heritage or SDP or whatever. And the problem is that's going to split all the votes and then let Labour right in through the middle. And I don't know how we overcome this before the next election. Is there someone that's going to unite the right of politics all behind one banner? Could that be the farmers? I mean, I'm sure the farmers wouldn't come out and associate themselves with any party, really. I don't I don't think they'd do that. They're just out, they're out demonstrating, showing us how important they are to this country. And I think most people, anybody with a decent brain in their head, knows how important farming is to this country. Unless you're Ed Miliband or somebody like that, you, you, you really, you should be concerned and you should be supporting the farmers. And I do 100%. But... You know, yeah, there's people might not like reform. Can they get enough people to hold their noses and vote for them? It's possible. We have seen uh, green shoots recently. I know you mentioned the council elections there. We have started seeing green shoots in the last few weeks. Reform UK just starting to gain a seat here, a seat there. And slowly but surely, they are making a little bit of headway in council seats. And they're standing in a lot more of those seats as well, which obviously helps. I I, I, st- I still stick to what I said. I think it's got to be reform. Because if you look at Kemi Baden, for example, at that uh, farmers' protest, she was lucky enough to be able to give a speech to them all on stage. It was a very uninspiring speech. Didn't get a great reception. Whereas if you if you looked at Nigel Farage, Richard Tice and Lee Anderson as they were going round, they were mobbed by supporters. People couldn't wait to speak to them, get photos with them, climb on tractors and get driven down, get driven through London and stuff. And I, they need the farmers do need that big name, but the right of politics needs that big name as well. And yes, Jeremy Clarkson is useful to a point, but I don't think he's ever going to run for parliament. I don't think he's ever going to stand in a seat or anything like that. And you're going to need political, uh, you, sorry, we're going to need people in parliament that actually represent this country and want the best for this country. And that includes defending the farmers. And I think that's going to take a combination of maybe Clarkson doing the heavy lifting, if you will going on the media, slagging off the BBC, slagging off the government, and let Farage and co do the political lifting and let them cause hell inside Parliament. Could be quite a nice combination, actually. Yeah. I mean, at this moment in time, if you're out there watching this thinking, I'm voting Tory in the next election because the Labour's crap. Yeah, you're right, Labour's crap. But the answer isn't the Tories. The Tories are exactly the same as Labour, just with better PR. So the Tories are not the solution to what we're going through. Where we stand at the moment, the only solution I can see, the the only weapon I can see is Reform UK. Now, I don't think we should get on our hands and knees and worship Reform UK as if they've been sent from God, as if they're the you know the perfect because they're not, and we don't know where Reform UK are going to go several years from now. But at this moment in time. Reform UK is is the only way forward I can see. And when they take a wrong turn, then we abandon Reform UK and we go somewhere else. But I, I, I keep hearing people who are thinking Reform UK are perfect and have got all the answers. They haven't. They're just a lot better than anyone else we've got at the moment. They're nowhere near perfect. So let's use Reform UK and I mean that in a derogatory term, let's use them to push the agenda the way we want to push the agenda and get towards where we want to go. And if they don't want to go all the way with us, then we abandon them. And then we, we, we hitch our wagon to another political party who may take us the rest of the way. But reform at the moment are the only game in town. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the appeal of Reform UK, unlike the Tories, unlike anybody else, is... They say what they mean and they mean what they say. Whether that's because they're essentially gobshites, yeah, that's you know, it's kind of true, I suppose, when it comes to people like Farage and Lee Anderson especially. But people like that. At least the genuine people who are standing up for what they believe in, which you don't get in any other party. You've got, I mean, to be fair, PMQs, if you saw PMQs this week or not, I'd never heard of Alex Burkhart. 
in, in the Tory party. I'd, I'd never heard of him, but he actually gave Angela Rayner an absolute kicking. Like she she had this script in front of her that had obviously been given to her by a lot of civil servants. And Angela Rayner, one thing she is good at, I must admit, is PMQ. She will stand there and she will argue and she's quite good at it. And because she's another one who does actually say what she means. She's a tough cookie. Yeah, yeah, she is. And she was absolutely dumbst- uh, dumbstruck by the questions coming at her. She couldn't answer them. She refused, basically, to answer them. Labour are in full-on retreat. And Reform UK need to start hammering home the message now. Stop trying to be establishment. Start hammering them. Even look at... I mean, I know Reform UK are making a big push inside Scotland at the moment and Wales because the next before the next general election, you've got the Holyrood and Welsh Senate elections in about 18 months' time. Uh, Reform UK in the latest polls have actually overtaken um, Welsh Labour on 28% in the polls now. It's only one poll, so, you know, it's not carried away, but it's just one poll, but they're in first place by that poll. And in Scotland, I don't know if you've... I know you don't cover Scottish politics as much as I do, but in Scotland... I chatted to the Silver Fox the other day on Scottish yeah. politics. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bit more updated than I, than I was a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's weird because the SNP are actually the official party in charge running a minority administration now, but it's it's actually Scottish Labour that have become the uh, the enemy, if you will, inside Holyrood because of Starmer's policies, such to such an extent that they've dropped, I think it's 11 points now in the voting intention in Scotland. They're dropping right down, and you've got all the other parties, the Tories, the Greens, uh, the Lib Dems, the SNP, all having a go at Labour about their policies. And Sawa, the Scottish Labour leader, has been forced to U-turn Starmer's policy on the winter fuel payment just to try and stop people besieging Labour, if you will. They're in full-on retreat in Scotland, in Wales and in England. And in Scotland, this is a gift for the SNP. That's the only downside to it, of course. It will mean that the SNP will, will probably end a minority administration but they'll they they'll end up regaining control of Scotland yeah, in some way or another. It'll probably have to be a minority administration though, because I don't think anybody else would want to work with them. But it, I mean, to be honest with you, I've said this a few times now. I don't think the SNP are going to get wiped out anywhere. Everyone keeps saying they're going to get wiped out and all that. But when you come when it comes to the Holyrood elections, much more people turn out for a general election than they do a Holyrood election. Partial representation as well. Yeah, it's proportional representation. Um, I, I I can see the SNP fairly comfortably staying the biggest party in Scotland. Even now, even though the agenda is pretty much dead, it still came out on top of a poll recently as the most important issue for a lot for Scottish people. I think it was something like 41% said that independence was the most important issue to them, which is absolutely bewildering to me. But it's obviously still an important thing for many people. So I, I'd... I wouldn't worry about the SNP too much. They're pretty powerless anyway. They can't do anything. Yeah, and, and I think Labour's been a godsend to them because the SNP main rhetoric was always vote for us to keep the Tories out because Tories have been Westminster. We'll protect from the Tories. Labour was always their threat because Labour socialists as well. But Labour is so bad at the moment. The SNP's line now is exactly the same. Vote for us because if you get Labour in, look what Labour are doing hammering farmers i mean farming is a big thing in scotland hammering pensioners you know they're going to destroy the north sea oil jobs so at the moment this labor government is a godsend to the smp increasing the duty on spirits what's scotland's biggest export to the world scotch whiskey you know i mean the smp did that as well by the way so they've got no room to talk even though they did try to have a go at labor for it but they've both done it as you said agriculture massive so and oil and gas, Labour trying to shut that down. So, I mean, the towns in Aber- uh, the Aberdeen itself, and then the surrounding towns of Aberdeen rely hugely on the at least two hundred and forty thousand workers that are part of the North Sea oil industry, oil and gas industry, plus the supply chains that supply it. Who workers might come off the rigs, go and buy a few pints, have a meal, etc., stay in a hotel and stuff. All that is going to die if Labour get their own way. But then again, the SNP have absolutely no room to talk on this because they've been saying exactly the same thing for a few years and now they're trying to U-turn on it. There's actually quite an opportunity for Reform UK inside Scotland because the Tories are never going to win a majority it's in, inside 
inside Holyrood, there's actually quite the opportunity for Reform UK to make big gains up there. And they've got some good can. They haven't been announced yet, but I know there's quite a few good candidates that are lined up up there. Some quite prominent people that are going to stand for Reform UK. And there's actually some good candidates who are going to stand as independents who will announce shortly as well. Reform need to take, and I hope they have done it, Farage has done this, take a no out of Trump's book and see how Trump won. Reform need to get into Scotland and go, we're going to drill, baby, drill. Because that, you know, that earns a lot of money for Scotland. And we've got North Sea oil, we've got shale gas in the north of England. They should be saying, drill, baby, drill. We're going to half your gas bills and your electric bills. We're going to reduce your taxes because we're going to be earning so much money drilling for gas and oil that we won't even need to tax you as much as we tax you now as well as your your, your utility bills you know going through the floor because they're that cheap that is what we need look at all the jobs it costs it, it, it sustains as well sorry it, so many jobs people's livelihoods these are skilled workers as well that you know they, they rely on this stuff look at the grange mouth oil refinery which has now been closed the SNP came out at the 11th hour. We tried to save it. We did absolutely sod all to try and save it. And Labour were more than happy to shut it down. Just like with the Tartar steel plant in Wales, they're happy to shut down all of our industries. And with it goes thousands and thousands of skilled jobs. And then you wonder why the benefits bill is going through the roof, etc. People haven't got livelihoods. I mean, if, if I lived in Scotland under the SNP, I'd be leaving anyway. There's already a brain drain going on. But then you come to England, it's just as bad now with Labour in charge. The brain, the brain, I don't know where they go. The brain is going to go abroad, aren't you? You're going to go somewhere that's going to promote aspiration, promote businesses. That's why that te uh, Texan oil company, I can't think of the name of them now, have just announced they're pulling out of the North Sea. Shell have said they're, they're going to pull out the North Sea because the extension of the windfall taxes, etc. They're just killing any industry, any jobs that people have got all on the altar, it seems to me, of net zero. Completely agree. And I think the first step on stopping this is bringing down Starmer and then bringing down the Labour government. I said he'd be gone by Christmas. I've only got four and a half weeks left of that prediction. Um, so I go to bed every night going, oh, so, I hope something breaks, something breaks, something breaks, bring him down. But we, we will see. But even if I'm wrong with the Christmas prediction, he... He's not going to last. He's going. He's going to be gone soon. But Ash, thanks very much for coming along, um, and let's catch up again soon. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks, Nick. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye.